So what is the delayed reading practice method? Well, there's a memorize, say, listen, and repeat component to this. Number one, when it comes to the model answer, I want you to first pause the video during the recording of the topic. So while you're listening, before I say the sentence that comes up, just pause the video and then look at the current sentence, just that one sentence and memorize it. Just that one sentence. I want you to be really thinking of it so that you can remember it long term. Next, look away from the video. So if you have a smartphone, look away from your smartphone. If you have a computer, look away from the computer screen and say the memorized sentence. I know it's not easy. It's not easy. That's why it's effective because you really have to think about it. Number four, look back to the video, start the video again. So press play and then listen to my recording of the sentence that you just said. And then after you listen to me, say the sentence again and try and copy my intonation and, and rhythm and things like that. When you try to memorize this first and say it, it, you really absorb it better than if you just read the sentence or if you just listen to the sentence. But after that, you still want to practice the intonation and the rhythm that can help your English move up to the next level. And finally, repeat this process from step one for each sentence in the recording. It will take you some time, but it's an excellent way to practice and you will get better if you practice this way. So what's today's question? Well, Today's topic is, as I mentioned before, an influential person. And so the topic here is describe a person who has been an important influence in your life. You should say who this person is and how long you have known him or her, why you chose this person, how this person has influenced your life, and explain how you feel about him or her. Next, I'm going to show you the notes that I made in one minute. I timed myself to be very careful that I only took one minute. I wanted it to be realistic and show you what I wrote down in the one minute. So I wrote down dad since birth, who this person is and how long you have known him or her. And then why you chose this person. Well, huge impact on personality, enjoyment of life. I wrote huge impact because I thought it would be a helpful change instead of important influence and show off a little bit of my vocabulary knowledge. Huge impact, important influence. Ah, these are pretty close. They have very similar meanings. Next, how this person has influenced your life. Taught me how to be a good person, work together with others, bring joy to those around me. When you're writing notes, you don't have a lot of time to think. So you need to kind of move quick, quick, quick. And I just tried to throw down some ideas that would hopefully help me think of a story that I could tell during the actual speaking part and how you feel about him or her. I think that's quite an easy question to answer. I mean, with it, with your dad, with your parents, you can probably say you love them or something like that. So I didn't bother writing a note for that last part. So next, you're going to do the practice. So remember, look at the sentence, look away from the screen, say the sentence, look back at the screen, listen to me, try and copy my rhythm, my intonation, and then move on to the next sentence. All right, here we go. So I'd like to talk about my dad because I think he had a huge impact on my life and on the person that I am today. Well, the question asks how long I've known my dad, and of course it's been since I was born. And I think he's had a really big influence on my personality, on the type of person I am, and on how I live my life and how I enjoy my life. I think he taught me a lot about how to be a good person and things like how to work together with others and and most importantly, how to bring joy to the people around me. I remember one time when I came home from school, it was just a normal day, but for my dad, it wasn't a normal day. I didn't know at the time, but he had planned this really, really amazing trip to the mountains for the weekend. And I came home and he said, Lee, what are your plans for the weekend? And I said, well, I don't really have any plans, I guess some homework. And he said, how about we go off to the mountains and enjoy ourselves? And I was, I was just amazed. I was so happy because I didn't expect anything like this to happen. And it was a really special moment for me. But it wasn't just this one time, it happened again and again. 
Still, I remember this moment because it was the first time I realized what he was doing. And I realized how he was working hard to bring joy for other people because those kinds of things are the types of things that brought joy for him. So those types of things brought joy for him. And that made a really big impact on me and how I should work hard to bring joy to others as well. How'd it go? Did you do the practice? Before we finish this lesson today, I'd like to look at some of the different language elements that this recording has. This is a spoken recording. It's not written. It's not an essay. So the level of vocabulary is a little bit different. And there are actually some slips that even native speakers make. And I'd like to show you what these slips are so that you recognize that you can get a band nine with a couple slips. That's not a problem. Fluency and general accuracy is most important. In the beginning, the first thing I have is the red text. And I highlight so and then well and 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 of course. These are all devices that I use to get started with these different sentences and they're very natural in speaking and you can incorporate them in your own speaking as well. In the beginning, so I'd like to talk about my dad. So I'd like to talk about my dad. Notice that I'm not starting with today I'm going to speak about a person who has had a large influence on my life. Yes, you can do that if you really, really need the time, but I want to jump into the topic and show the examiner, you know, I know how to speak. I can do it. I'm confident. I'm comfortable. I'm fluent. And I just jump right into it. So I'd like to talk about my dad because I think he had a huge impact, huge impact. I mentioned this before, but instead of large influence or whatever the topic said, I'm changing the words to huge impact on my life and on the person that I am today. What I want you to notice here with the green text is that huge impact on and on. So huge impact is both on my life and a huge impact on the person that I am today. I'm using huge impact for both. Next, down below in the purple in the third sentence, and I think he's had a really big influence on my personality. So huge impact up above, but I didn't want to say big impact or large impact again, so I used a different one, really big influence. And again, on my personality, influence on my personality, influence on the type of person I am, influence on how I live my life, and influence on how I enjoy my life. Interesting down below in this next sentence is how I use the word how three different times in three different parts of the sentence. I think he taught me a lot about how to be a good person and things like how to work together with others, and most importantly, how to bring joy to the people around me. Even though you don't want to use the same word lots and lots of times, how is a is a smaller word, so it's okay. And using something three times in a row, for some reason, just sounds good and it feels good in English. So having this trifecta, this three, this group of three of hows here sounds kind of nice. And it's very easy for me to say like this. Next sentence, what I want you to notice is, I remember one time when I came home from school, this is the moment where I jumped into my story. One of the pieces of advice I always give with part two is that you want to jump into a story if possible. First, it makes it easier to talk more. Second, telling a story can help you jump into the past tense and show off a little bit more of your grammatical knowledge, your grammatical accuracy. So what do I mean by showing off some grammar? Well, you can see just in this first sentence in the second part, I didn't know at the time, but he had planned this really, really amazing trip to the mountains for the weekend. He had planned. This is past perfect. And I didn't know it's just past simple. So we're contrasting past perfect and past simple. In this next part, I'm using quotes. I'm saying, hey, Lee, what are your plans for the weekend? This is a very realistic way of telling a story. And down below, I was so happy because I didn't expect, I hadn't expected anything like this to happen. And it was a really special moment for me. I was very excited. I was very happy. There are lots of different ways of saying the same thing. I highlighted this text because I want to show you that when you're speaking for this IELTS speaking, you don't have to use super big words every time. There are good collocations. There are good phrases. But I was so happy. That's very normal. Not everything has to be fancy. Last part. 
we have this R. Why did I highlight this? I highlighted this to show you that there are slips sometimes. I should have said were here. That would have been more natural for this sentence, but I said are, and I just kept going. This is probably one of the reasons that I repeated. So those are the types of things that brought joy for him. I actually corrected myself later on, but these kinds of slips happen. Don't worry about it during your actual recording, during your actual speaking. And finally, I wanted to highlight that the very final part, the very last part was that I connected back to the original topic of how my father had a very large influence on my life and he's an influential person for me, how he had a really big impact. 